I'm Jen, and this is Prague, the heart of Europe and my adopted home. Subscribe to get an American's take on this enchanting city and all things Czech. Welcome to the adventure. So today we're going to get to the heart of the matter and we're going to talk about quality of life because that's kind of like the most important thing, isn't it? Everybody's metrics to measure this are different. And so I'm just going to use my own personal metrics. And instead of getting into government statistics and all that kind of stuff, I'm just going to use my own personal experiences. So we'll start with work. Now, when you meet an American, probably the first question they will ask you after what's your name, it's what do you do? And I've found that they're generally not interested in what you do in order to see if your interests align or um, to ask you advice about a certain thing. They're asking what you do to classify you. Um, do you make more money than them? Um, are you more uh, educated than them? So for example, if um, someone asked me, what do you do? I would say, well, what do I do? I, I make videos like all day long. And they would ask me then, well, is that how you earn money? And I'd say, not really, hopefully someday. But then they'd say, well, what do you do to earn money? Like, how do you support yourself? So that is the, that is the basis of that question. They want to know about where your money comes from. In Europe, it's quite odd to hear someone ask, what do you do? Um, especially here in Czechia, there, it's, it doesn't define you. It's not, it's not like um, who you are. So they might be more interested in, um, you know, well, why are you here if you're American? What are you doing here? Um, what do you like about the city? What do you think of the food? Things like that. Um, and, you know, I have a lot of Czech friends that I don't even know what they do. And they know that I used to be a teacher, but they don't really get into so much of how I earn money now. Um, it's just not, it's something that you do during the day to support yourself, um, but it doesn't define you. So that's a big difference. Another big difference with regards to work and the quality of life is that in the United States, at my job in law firms, I got two paid vacation weeks a year. Um, that is not the law, it's just something that was offered to me in that position. So some people don't get any paid vacation. Um, but I got paid vacation and I never took it because there's a feeling that if something, if you take a week off and something goes wrong in your department, um, you'll get blamed and it's too stressful. And then you go on vacation and they call you to ask you like where a folder is or something. It's like you can never quite get away from work, so why bother? Um, here, employees, I believe, are mandated four weeks of vacation year, I believe, um, paid vacation. And they take it very seriously, as do all European countries. So generally, like, August is the month where a lot of um, work shuts down and also there's a decent chunk of time around the Christmas holiday season. Now that's great to get this um, guaranteed paid vacation. That's wonderful. But there's a little crack that English teachers fall into. There's a thing here called the Zivnostensky list. It's like a trade license. And most of the schools, the language schools, hire American, British, English teachers but they have to be working as independent contractors on this list. And that means that the school doesn't have to pay um, as they would a normal employee with health benefits, paying for your social security, um, and, and giving benefits like, like vacation time. So unfortunately, I've never had these glorious four weeks of paid vacation. Um, it's just something that I built into my budget, something that I know that I have to earn enough money so that if I'm not working for a certain amount of time that I can, that I can pay my bills. But it's, it's good in theory, it just doesn't seem to apply to the vast majority of teachers that I know that are working here. Some of them are um, employees, but most aren't. As far as quality of life, I like the Czech way. It's you know, they kind of realize that vacation is an important part of your, your mental health. 
your family time. Like, it, that is life. And work is what helps you pay for life. Whereas in the United States, vacation is something that you can afford to take when you have a lot of money. So the next very important metric of quality of life is the people, right? Your social life. So in the United States, or sorry, in Los Angeles, just keeping this to Los Angeles, I grew up in, in that city, so I know a lot of people, and it's very big, it's very wide. You need to drive all over the place. And it takes so long to go from one place to another that there are some places that we just never go. So we have a joke in LA that, do you live east of the 405 or west of the 405? The 405 is like, it's like the mother of all freeways. And it gets incredibly busy pretty much all day and every all the streets near it trying to feed it are so busy that you can't even get through so it just across the 405 is like an extra 30 minutes to your drive so we have friends that live on the east and we just say like sorry see you on your birthday just no we're not going over there also because the public transportation system is almost non-existent in los angeles um people really do end up drinking and driving. Uh, the more responsible people will have like one or two drinks and then drive, but there must be so much drunk driving in Los Angeles that I didn't even consider before I moved here. So in Czechia, it is a zero tolerance um, alcohol blood level, I believe. Um, no, no drinks, you don't, you don't drink and drive. Um, but because the public transportation is so great in Prague, that's never been an issue. It's, it's not even something I think about. So the fact that you have to drive everywhere and the fact that your friends live all over the place and you can't get to them, it takes like an hour to get to their house, that really kind of kills your, your will to go out. Another thing about socialization is that in Los Angeles, there's not a lot of public space for you to go and enjoy. Even at the beach, you have to pay for parking. It's like, God, $10, maybe more. And then there's like sand and, you know, sharks. And I mean, you don't do that every day. In, in Los Angeles, we tend to socialize privately. So our, maybe our apartments or homes are a little bit bigger because there's more space and we generally have like a little outdoor area because we're not in apartments, we're like flat. And so we'll invite our friends over for a barbecue. And that's fine, that's a lot of fun. The Czechs on the other hand socialize, I would say more publicly, particularly in the city. So first of all, there's tons of open space public space. There are squares with benches in them. Sometimes there's musicians, pianos placed in the squares that you can, that you can listen to. There's big gorgeous parks and you can take your dog and he can run free. There's just a lot of public space where you can meet people. And there's this really awesome hospoda culture. It's like, it's pub culture basically. But it's totally normal to go to a pub after work with colleagues, to meet up with other friends. It's not limited to like the young people who are looking to meet someone of the opposite sex, right? It's not like you're going to the bar in LA to like meet someone. Um, here, it's like you go and you sit at a big table and you get your half liter of Pilsner and you just kind of like have some discussions. It's, it's fantastic, I love it. It's totally cheap, right? My God, even in the center, it's like Americans, it's like $3 in the center. That's outrageous. It, that's like the most expensive you'll find, right? And you go and you sit there and you enjoy yourself and that's all it costs to spend, you know, half an hour, an hour, however long it takes you to drink your beer um, with your friends. It's fantastic. And if you don't drink, there's kavarnas, like coffee, coffee places. In the United States, we treat coffee like we're filling up our car, right? We go in, we order a big one, and then we run out to our next job. And here you go in, you sit down, you relax and, and meet with some colleague or friend there and you kind of like order a piece of cake because why not? You're sitting and enjoying a coffee. So as far as quality of life, um, if you don't have a lot of money to spend, then the pub culture, the coffee culture, or just the free space 
um, that you can spend your time with your friends, that is a lot better than spending the money to go to an expensive restaurant in LA and then getting basically two hours to hang out with the people that you care about. And of course, family. So obviously when you live halfway around the world from where you grew up, you are leaving a lot of your family behind. And that's a really hard part about living overseas. Um, but the truth is, in Los Angeles, I didn't really see my family that often. My Half of my family is up in San Francisco, and I only saw them about once a year. And I just, you know, you just don't make the time to go the two hours to see your mom. Or, I don't know, I think we just work so much and just don't... I don't know if we don't value family as much. I don't want to say that, but... The Czechs definitely value family a lot, and they all get together uh, in their sort of family chata, which is like a cottage. And I always hear that people are meeting their grandparents and aunts and uncles and getting together. There's a lot of stories like that. So, so I think that family life is a little bit more central to the, the Czech life than it is, at least in Los Angeles. One way that... that moving to Prague has really brought my family closer to me is that a lot of my family members now have an excuse to travel to Europe and so a lot of them are coming to Europe visiting the Czech Republic after they've been here maybe we'll go to another city the next time and I even convinced my sister whom I did not grow up with we grew up in different homes and so she moved here for a year and it was a really valuable time for me for us to get to know each other. And we probably wouldn't have that relationship had we not lived together in Prague. Okay, so another, another thing that adds greatly to your quality of life is where you live. In Los Angeles, I lived in a series of expensive apartments in decent areas, not the best areas, but um, the worst part about it was that they weren't near anything. Like, you, they were near other apartments, but you couldn't just walk to the store. You couldn't walk to restaurants or pubs. You had to drive. And there's an old rock song that's like, Nobody Walks in L.A. I've had people pull over in their car when they've seen me walking on the street in L.A. and say, Do you need help? Are you, did, did your car break down? Is everything okay? Uh, because it's so rare to see people walking. Um, but in Prague, I live in a m sort of a mixed zoning area. So by that, I mean that um, <clears throat> three or four flights above at the top of the building are residential. And then the bottom floor is shops or pubs, um, restaurants or places to get the things that you need. So I literally just pop downstairs and get whatever I need. Just the thought of getting in my car to go get milk just depresses me so much. Here, it's like, I don't 70 steps before I can get um, some, some milk at the corner store. So that just adds to my happiness. It's not, it's, it's just easy. Now, housing has gotten more expensive in the last eight years, definitely. And there's a great video that Arepas for Dinner did about this. Um, she's a, a YouTuber who lives in Prague, and I'll, I'll link it below. But one thing that I personally find that's driving up the price is um, sort of the, rent, the rental flats or the Airbnbs. It's not all Airbnb, but um, it's a very touristy city. It's the same thing that's happened in Barcelona and Amsterdam the tourists are coming and instead of people renting out a room to make extra money, um, big companies are buying entire buildings and making those Airbnbs. And so that drives up the prices for all. Transportation, I could talk about this all day long, but um, car culture sucks. Public transportation is awesome. I, you, I mean, you don't have to get parking tickets all the time, you don't have to um, drive home drunk, <laughs> you shouldn't do that. It's amazing. It, it, it's like the best public transportation system in Europe. It's fantastic. I made a video about it, I'll link it above. It's hard to, it's hard to emphasize enough how greatly a good public transportation system adds to my quality of life. It just does. It's wonderful. Even if I have to take a longish ride, like 30 minutes, bring a book, someone else is driving. It's like, oh my God, America, you gotta learn, you gotta do it.
Okay, obviously health is a big metric for quality of life. And I can make a series of videos about the differences between Czech healthcare and American healthcare. And if you really wanted to give me a homework assignment, I could do it. But for this video, I just wanted to say very briefly that American healthcare is terribly expensive, terribly disorganized. Um, I have family members and friends, some of whom have small children, and they cannot afford health insurance, so they don't have it. I have friends who have gotten very ill and have needed antibiotics and have not gone to the doctor because they don't want to spend the $500 that that visit will be. It's a disaster. It's a disaster. And strangely, healthcare is linked to your job in the United States. So if you are fired from your job or your job closes, you don't have insurance anymore. And it's very expensive to buy the outside, the outside insurance. So in the middle of this pandemic, five and a half million Americans lost their insurance because they can't go to work. So it's just a catastrophe. Now, a lot of people say that the US medical system is the best in the world because they have, you know, top heart surgeons and top brain surgeons, and maybe the most advanced cancer research, which I don't even believe that that's true, but I'm not gonna go into details here. But even if we do specialize in these sort of um, high-end advanced medical technologies, what good does it do society if you can't get antibiotics because you can't afford a $500 visit? to the doctor. It's insane. So as an American here in Czechia, I, in order to ha maintain a visa, I have to pay for my own insurance. <clears throat> I get covered on the public health insurance here. It costs me $100 per month, quite reasonable. I've been to the doctor a few times. I don't have personal experience. My husband does. He went to the emergency room um, because he was, uh, playing with a playing hockey with a bunch of 20 year olds and they uh, checked him pretty hard on the ribs So he had to go to the emergency room His scans his visit was free. I have a friend who spent many days in the hospital here for an unknown issue her stay was free and I have another friend who had has given birth to children in the US and here and I believe her experience was a lot better and certainly cheaper here. So health is obviously very important for your quality of life and just knowing that I have insurance, just knowing that that I don't have to worry about going bankrupt because I got sick, that obviously adds to quality of life. So the metric of beauty might seem superficial, but for me it's part of what makes me sing, right? I, I walk out of my house and I'm just surrounded by just gorgeous buildings and beautiful, well-maintained streets. You know, you look up at these buildings and you think somebody actually took the time. First of all, somebody took the money to pay for that. Somebody took the time to like carve out this gorgeous sculpture just to hold up a balcony at the, on the, the front of a building. It's magnificent. And every turn you take in this city, and in cities all around Czechia, they're, they're just stunningly beautiful, stunningly beautiful. And it's just inspiring, you know? In Los Angeles, we have a lot of what we call strip malls, and they're just kind of like ugly corner, it's very small malls, and they have like a Starbucks, and maybe a McDonald's, and maybe a chiropractor or something. And it's just uninspiring, you know? It's not beautiful. There are some beautiful parts of LA. The ocean obviously is wonderful. And getting up on Mulholland Drive at night and the city is just like nothing but black and, and lights. It's, that's gorgeous, but it just doesn't inspire me um, as, as much as Prague does. And also in Prague, there's amazing access to culture. It's not something that is reserved for the wealthy. Um, 
like for example, theater here is relatively cheap. I mean, 10, you can buy a ticket for $10, sometimes a little bit more. For wonderful theater, you can go to concerts, amazing concerts, pretty much every day of the week. Now that comes probably from the tourism, but there is so much to explore culturally and it's not expensive. And that just adds to, like if you're not living your life for art and beauty and music and those things that bring you joy, wh what is it all for? And, and Los Angeles, you know, it's the heart of Hollywood. There, there are cultural events, I'm sure. I just never bothered to do any of them. People would just go out to bars. That was the social life. But here it's quite normal to see 20 year olds at the museum or at a play or at some musical event. It's normal to see musicians walking around the streets with their giant sort of, I don't know the musical instruments, their giant musical instruments in hard cases on their backs. I mean, people play the violin here. Like this is just, this is just what they teach. So access to culture is something that just makes life worth living to me personally. So the last thing I wanted to mention was that pretty much every day, if not several times a week, my husband and I, one of us will say, best life ever, best life ever. And the other one will agree. And it's really how we feel here. Um, I cannot imagine, even with my high salary and my new car and my, um, healthy family and friends and my, uh, you know, <laughs> proximity to the beach, I never would have said to myself, best life ever. It wouldn't have occurred to me. I think there's a striving for success mentality in LA, probably in San Francisco and definitely in New York, that you're never satisfied. To be satisfied is to be lazy, or to not want to work hard. And, and even if you have everything you wanted last year, you're already thinking about what you want next year. And a combination of all the factors that I talked about today have put me really at peace. And I kind of live now more for the moment. And I just tend to realize the beauty of everything around me and the good fortune of everything around me. And I don't know if it's particularly the Czech influence um, or if it's leaving the American influence and seeing how other people do it that have made me feel that way. So I hope that this gave you a little bit of insight into the different styles of living and the quality of life that you can find in both countries, in both cities. This is my singular experience. If you have had another experience, if you are Czech and lived in America or America and lived in, in uh, Czechia, then I'd love to hear about it below. Tell me if, if you've experienced anything that I did or what your experience was like. I'm really curious to find out. And if I touched on any topics in this video that you would like me to talk about more deeply, then let me know and I can make a video. Okay, uvidíme se příští týden. Ahoj!